Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am pretty good, Brian. How are you? We've got a special two-year-old edition of Horse Center this week. I've always been fond of the two-year-old, two-year-old horses, that is. Exactly, exactly. Well, two-year-olds aren't so bad uh, humans either, Matt. But yeah, I've, I've always been a fan of two-year-olds. It used to be where we would see these great two-year-olds go on and become great three-year-olds. That's a little bit more dicey these days. But I'll tell you what, we have a lot of potential nice horses running this weekend in grade one two-year-old races, both in California and Kentucky, Matt. Without further ado, we're going to uh, we're gonna jump right in. We're going to a Breeders Futurity, which Matt is jam packed. In fact, there's a horse uh, here uh, in the 15 hole, uh, also eligible, named Carmel Road, that could be any kind for trainer Bob Baffert. Uh, as it stands now, though, he's not going to get in because there's 14 horses ahead of him, a lot of interesting horses. I don't even know who's going to be the favorite. Uh, you see the morning line here where Loggins. Is a slight choice over the Pletcher pair, Matt, but uh, it certainly could go another way. One of those Pletcher horses could be the favorite. But let's talk about Loggins first. Matt, this is a son of Ghost Zapper, trained by Brad Cox, and he's out of a Blame Mare, who is a graded stakes winner. He looked the part. He got bet like the part. Then he looked like the part in his debut. Yeah, he sure did, uh, Brian. Well, all of those things, and when... Brad Cox has has one going that's well bet, well bred, uh, runs off the screen. Who knows how good this one can be? You know, we're talking about uh, fourteen horses, most of them very inexperienced. You know, the the most experienced horses in the field have like uh, have like four races. Um, so who knows? It's it, it it it's hard enough picking the favorite as you said, let alone trying to pick a winner. You're right, Matt. This 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 has a, uh, it's a bit of a crapshoot. Lightly raced two-year-olds, talented two-year-olds going a mile and a 16th, most of, most of them going uh, a distance or two, two turns for the first time, and you got a, a, a jam-packed field. So a lot of things could happen. It makes it a, an interesting betting race. Loggins sure look good sprinting. At Churchill Downs for trainer Brad Cox, Florent Chiroux off. He's got speed. I do think, Matt, that there will be quite a bit of speed in here. And I'm probably going to lay off a little bit of the speed. But Loggins looks like he could be a very good one, but only his second start of his career. Uh, next, after that, Matt, the other two horses that I think are potential favorites at Keeneland on Saturday are both Todd Pletcher trainees. They're both sons of violence. Let's start with Forte because he is the lone grade one winner in the field. Matt, he won that hopeful at Saratoga in the slop. Yeah, he certainly did. Uh, um, he was an impressive debut winner relatively early on uh, these days uh, in the uh, at Belmont in the spring meeting and then kind of had a, you know, a lackluster effort in the Sanford at Saratoga when he finished fourth, but he sure bounced back uh, in the uh, uh, in the hopeful on a sloppy track and was a very impressive winner. It looks like, you know, up until entries were drawn, that Forte was going to go in the Champagne, which ended up again being run on a sloppy track. But instead, uh, Pletcher uh, uh, changed his mind and sent Forte down to Keeneland, where the Breeders' Cup will be, and found himself a big field, a field that's far tougher than the Champagne was. Yeah, there's some good horses in that Champagne, and Blazing Sevens was a good-looking winner in the slot. But you're right, this is a tougher spot, if nothing else, than the sheer numbers of horses. But uh, getting a two-turn race at Keeneland before the Breeders' Cup seems to be the way Pletcher wanted to go with his two uh, highly regarded sons of violence here. Forte, as you said, looked very good in the slop. He he rolled right by Gulfport in the stretch at Saratoga, going seven furlongs last time. And the race before that, you know, he got beat. He ran fourth. It was a big field. I'm not sure if I'm ready to call it a uh, mediocre or, or or dull race by him, but he certainly improved last time. Was it the slop helping, or is Forte really one of the best uh, two-year-olds in the country? We're going to find out more. 
The other pletcher who may interest me even more is Lost Art, Matt. And I'm, I'm going to start my conversation with Lost Art and say, who in American racing is a better broodmare than Marion Ravenwood, that fine broodmare uh, daughter of uh, AP Indy? She is the dam of Lost Ark, and she's on a roll. Yeah, and you got and you got to like the name uh, Lost Ark, coming from the dam. Uh, Marion Ravenwood, who of course was the lead female character, that was her name in Raiders of the Lost Ark, thus the name Lost Ark of, of this horse. Uh, Pletcher kind of took a little bit of an alternate path with, uh, with Lost Ark, uh, not beginning. He began his uh, career at Belmont, uh, similar to Forte, well bet, odds on. But then he opted to go to Monmouth Park, to a favorite race of ours, the Sapling, that nowadays, Brian, is run at a mile around two turns. If I'm not mistaken, back in the day when you and I were a little younger stomping around uh, Monmouth Park, uh, Sapling was an important sprint race for two-year-olds. Yeah, that's right. It used to be six furlongs. And uh, yeah, I saw a lot of good Sapling winners back in the day. Uh, maybe none better than Bet Twice, who went on to become a Belmont Stakes winner and a multiple graded stakes winner. Uh, yeah, and in fact, I don't know if you remember, Matt, but I said, hey, maybe this is the next Bet Twice because Lost Ark looked not good winning this sapling. One thing I like about Lost Ark, and I guess you could say the same about Forte a little bit, but I, I feel more com uh, confident in Lost Ark's ability to pass horses. He showed that he could do that certainly last time. He did it a little bit in his debut at Belmont sprinting. But then in the sapling, he was able to lay off a moderate pace at Monmouth Park and just roll by like a very good horse. He's won both of his starts impressively. And Lost Ark, for my money, might be the horse to beat in here, Matt. We talked about the three horses I think will buy for favoritism, but then there's a whole gaggle of other interesting horses. Frost, Frosted Departure has speed on the rail coming off a nice win. Home, the number three, though. Trained by Kenny McPeak, who often does well this time of year at Keeneland with juveniles or juvenile fillies. Honed uh, was a, uh, a hard-fought winner of his debut, but then came back with a very nice rally last time in a stakes race at Churchill Downs. Yeah, he certainly did. He was uh, uh, he was second in the uh, in the Iroquois. <coughs> excuse me, with a big, big late run where he kind of you know inexperienced horse raced a bit greenly down the stretch and and came from far behind and battled uh, uh uh in that race which had a pretty decent uh pretty decent field and ended up just narrowly missing the win yeah hone was hone was certainly rallying curly jack was the winner of that race and was a little closer to the pay, early pace uh but hone was the one that came from well out of it got up for second uh, good rally, um, probably bodes, bodes well for this race with uh, with a big field and probably uh, a number of horses who could show speed in here. Confidence gain uh, was a little bit farther back in this race, but is not a throw out. I, I, I'm not sure I can throw out anybody in this field, frankly. Instant Coffee interests me a little bit. Uh, Instant Coffee was a debut winner at Saratoga. And the one thing I like about Instant Coffee, he also passed horses in that maiden win. But the horse he beat is a, a horse named Arthur's Ride, and uh, I think Arthur's Ride is going to be a good horse. So, obviously, I think Instant Coffee's debut at Saratoga was pretty nice. I know you like the next horse on the list a little bit, Matt, and that's Bourbon Bash. Yeah, that's for sure. And I do want to note uh, with Instant Coffee that uh, Instant Coffee is owned by Al Gold, the owner of Cyberknife, who... Uh, is trained by Brad Cox, so it's those connections coming back. Uh, I found it interesting, though, that that horse went off at 14 to 1 in there. But anyway, yeah, Bourbon Bash for uh, D. Wayne Lucas uh, started his career uh, up at Saratoga, where Lucas spends the summer. And Lucas just had a fantastic meeting at Saratoga and, and had some two-year-olds that ran really well, Bourbon Bash uh, uh, being, being one of them. Uh, he won a uh, a maiden special weight at Saratoga in his second start, which is very typical of Lucas. But in his debut, he was second uh, and, and a very good second, uh, just missing the win. Um, then he went to the hopeful, 
where, uh, you know, Bourbon Bash had been a little bit more forwardly placed, got off to a poor start. The hopeful was on a sloppy track. And if you want to take into consideration the poor start and the sloppy track, maybe that's a draw a line through it race. And uh, Bourbon Bash appears to be a horse that's going to come with generous odds. Yeah, he will be double digits. In fact, those odds, uh, it, it should say 15 to 1 on our morning line. Bourbon Bash has shown a lot of speed for trainer D. Wayne Lucas. I'm actually liking the filly that he's running in the Alsa by 80s a little bit better on Friday. Uh, take charge Brianna than Bourbon Bash is my Lucas long shot of the week. But Bourbon Bash has talent. Uh, second to, to Blazing Sevens, uh, pretty well beaten second in that debut to Blazing Sevens. But Blazing Sevens, the horse that just won the champagne, won his next start by more than eight lengths. And then, yeah, like Matt says, he got up to a slow start on a sloppy track, rushed up and, and, and backed out a little bit. But, uh, yeah, maybe we can draw a line right through that hopeful for Bourbon Bash. So many other horses to talk about. Fantastic again is coming off a big win. Steve Asmussen has a pair of interesting horses in red route one. And uh, who's the other one? Powerful. Uh, but we, we got to talk about Newgate a little bit. Newgate comes from the barn of Bob Baffert, Matt. And uh, he was a good looking debut winner before running into Cave Rock last time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh... Baffert, uh, his barn is loaded with quality two-year-olds uh, uh, at this point of the year. And somehow I believe there are probably some more in that barn that uh, have not made it to the track thus far. But at this point, uh, Cave uh, Rock, I, I have to stop myself from saying caveman all the time. Cave Rock uh, appears to be the star of the barn and... and Newgate ran into uh, Cave Rock in the Del Mar Futurity, but uh, in his uh, debut, he did the way, did things the way you expect good Baffert two-year-olds to do it. He was an impressive winner at short odds. Um, so, you know, Baffert's got to move some of these other two-year-olds away from Santa Anita and this weekend away from C Cave Rock to find them places to run. And, and here we have Newgate. Yeah, away from Cave Rock, but also maybe he thinks that this is a real Breeders' Cup juvenile contender by sending him to Keeneland to get, again, a prep over the track. This is the same distance and track, of course, that the Breeders' Cup juvenile will be next month at Keeneland. So yeah, and a really interesting field. I mean, uh, even, even horses we haven't mentioned yet, Goodhart coming off a good win on turf, two fills. Uh, coming from smaller trucks, but uh, it, it just strikes me that there's a lot of speed in here, a lot of talent. It's going to be an interesting 14-horse field. If Carmel Road somehow draws in, he's another horse who certainly will be a horse to watch in this Breeders' Futurity, but uh, if you get the winner in this 14-horse field, I think you're going to feel pretty good about it, Matt. Going from the Breeders' Futurity, which is a 14-horse field and wide open, a grade one prep for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, we go to another race that doesn't look nearly as wide open. It's a grade one prep for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile as well. But this one features Cave Rock, who is the top rated juvenile, the top rated two year old male in the country. And uh, Bob Baffert has a bunch. And uh, this is the one, as Matt said, is, is, is the top rated one uh, for, for, for now. And uh, Cave Rock, as you can see there in this eight horse field in the American Pharaoh, also on Saturday. He should be a pretty heavy favorite, Matt, off of the two races he's run so far. Yeah, I think Baffert, if I'm counting correctly, Brian, has four of the eight in this field. And, and uh, uh, quality two-year-olds that come from ownership that has had a lot of success with Baffert in the past connections that have won the Kentucky Derby. We've got, we've got some of them with the, that big partnership of SF racing and starlight and Matacat. And there's another one in here that, that uh, that's owned by uh, Zadon stables. So these are regular clients of Baffert who open up their purses to get him quality two year olds. Yeah, and Cave Rock looks every bit the part of a quality two-year-old, having won both of his starts very easily. He's shown a lot of speed. He's run very fast. And he's a son of Arrogate, Matt. Uh, Cave Rock is not bred to be a sprinter. 
but uh, the, that debut win and that seven furlong win where he uh, he uh, eschewed the early speed, he just he brushed them off and he uh, he won impressively very fast time, 120 and change in that grade one Del Mar Futurity. So there's every reason in the world to believe that Cave Rock is going to be a good one. He's already a grade one winner. He looks for a second grade one start here and a victory here, uh, similar to what he's been doing in his first two starts, should make him the Breeders' Cup juvenile favorite next month at Keeneland. However, Matt, you, you, you mentioned there's four Baffert horses, and, and I actually think making the morning line here that those are the four favorites. So this is a Bob, Bob Baffert dominated race. Maybe Gandolfini, the uh, uh, debut winner for Baffert on the rail coming from Los Alamitos, is the one that can be off the pace a little bit. But it looks like the Bafferts are the speed because this, after Cave Rock, you're looking at National Treasure and Hejazi, who uh, both have a lot of speed, are well liked. Let's talk about Hajazi first. He's a maiden in this field. There's a couple of interesting maidens in this field. He's a New York bred Matt, but he was purchased as a two-year-old in training for just over three point five million dollars. That's that's mad money, yo. <laughs> it sure is. Uh, yeah, and and it's really interesting. Like you said, he's still a maiden. He's got two seconds at Del Mar in maiden special weights. One of them got earned him a triple digit buyer speed figure uh, um, and obviously you know three million dollar price tag well regarded and and the the breeding brian says that this guy should do better with the increased distance being by bernardini out of a medaglia doro mare yeah i'm gonna agree with you there matt and uh he ran a good he ran against a good horse in his debut and then he ran against a, a very very fast Baffert horse last time and ran better so Hejazi don't be fooled by the uh, 0 for 2 lifetime record he looks like a developing horse and and again that price tag of of over 3.5 million there's a lot of people looking for this horse to really improve National Treasure on the other hand is one for one he's a son of quality road and he looked good, again, showing a lot of speed, as so many Bafferts do early on in the year. But National Treasure looked good. Looks like another horse like Cave Rock and Hejazi, who could be part of this early pace as they all stretch out for the first time to two turns in the American Pharaoh. Yeah, National Treasure, uh, that's one that's from SF and Mattaquette and, and Starlight uh, Ownership Group, et cetera, et cetera, and a bunch of others. Uh, it, it was interesting to me that uh, National Treasure broke his maiden, but it was at odds of uh, close to seven to two. And typically these top Bafferts go off at, you know, 50 cents uh, to the dollar. Yeah, Matt, Matt pays attention to that a little bit uh, more than I do. Uh, we were talking about instant coffee going off as kind of a long shot in his debut win at Saratoga. National Treasure didn't get that quite like some of the other Bafferts do here last time, but he looked good in his debut. I guess Gandalf is kind of the odd horse out of the Baffert bunch. He has a little less speed. He's coming from Los Alamitos, although he won going a little bit farther than the other horses in the race. Uh, I like the name Gandolfini. I, I'm not sure what that means for his chances here in the American Pharaoh, Matt. Yeah, and, you know, I, I don't think that you should look at the fact that he broke his maiden at Los Alamitos uh, as a negative. With that many quality two-year-olds in his barn, Baffert had to spread them around looking for spots for these horses to, as he prefers, to break their maiden at first asking. That's right. And, and the fact that Gandolfini can pass horses might be a positive, actually, as we look at this American Pharaoh with the uh, three Bafferts all having the three Baffert favorites all having speed or, or, or plenty of speed. Uh, the rest of the field looks like long shots to me. And uh, I couldn't jump on any, any one of the two, three or four, Matt. But the seven is an interesting horse and, and he comes from CRK stables. I, I've liked I've liked crk stables horses before they buy some expensive uh two-year-olds in training and skinner is no different he's also a maiden like hajazi uh matt he he was fifth in his debut where he was way back early and then he passed some some horses along the way in, in, a, in a fast maiden race 
Then he came back and I, I watched that Del Mar Futurity a little bit. And he was really the only horse who was running. Uh, he started a move on, uh, on the turn and passed horses with a, a, a good move there. And he finished third. It was a well-beaten third behind Cave Rock. Everybody was well-beaten behind Cave Rock. Uh, but he beat horses like Newgate, for instance, in that Del Mar Futurity. I think he's screaming out for a distance here in his third lifetime start. And, and I know he's going to be running late. Yeah, and and you know, uh, comes from the barn of John Sheriffs. Uh, um, he, who who likes to develop horses to come from off the pace and does things a little bit differently than others at times. So you know, the fact that he is another one who uh, is still a maiden, you know, it, it is not necessarily a negative when you note that it is Sheriffs who's doing the training. Yeah, and, and who knows, with Sheriff's doing the training, maybe this horse is already uh, enjoying some Guinness Stouts in the morning as part of his uh, uh, pre-race uh, routines. And Yada fans know what I'm talking about there. All right, Matt, uh, we talked about the Breeders' Futurity, a wide open 14-horse field in the Breeders' Futurity. So many possible horses who could who could run well or win that race at Keeneland. And, and obviously, it's the biggest prep for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile being, again, at the same track and the same distance as the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, which is now, what, Matt, uh, four weeks away. So we're looking at that Breeders', Breeders Futurity intently. And then over in California, we got the juvenile favorite. We got Cave Rock, who's looked so good in his first two races in the American Pharaoh. Uh, let's talk about top picks now, and I'm going to let you go first. We started with the tough one, the Breeders' Futurity. You go first with that one, sir. Okay, Brian, as I said, uh, as we both said, it's hard enough to figure out who might be the favorite, let alone pick a winner. And because of that, because of the big field, um, I'm going to have to go with a horse that is a long shot because who knows what's going to happen in the field? Who knows who's going to break well? Who knows who's going to have a good trip? Who knows who is going to stretch out particularly well? And I earlier I talked a little bit about Bourbon Bash um, and his first two wins being impressive at Saratoga for D. Wayne Lucas. Uh, uh, Lucas has won this race a whole bunch of times, hasn't won it in uh, uh, recent years but he hasn't had the kind of horses that he's had now uh, in a long time. I'm going to go with Bourbon Bash as my top pick. Yeah, Matt, and I, I think you're going to get some really good odds. I am not with you because I, I just I just worry about the speed. However, I will say this about Bourbon Bash. There is a lot of reasons to draw a line through that hopeful. So if you're looking for a, a horse who might be 20 to 1, um, and you can draw a line through his last race, which was his only bad performance. Matt could be right with that one. I can't go anywhere else but Lost Ark, though, Matt. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, Marion Ravenwood uh, for you Spielberg and, and, and Harrison Ford fans. Great movie, Raider, uh, great movie Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, he's he's well-bred and, and, and a son of violence out of Marion Ravenwood. Marion Ravenwood in the last... Uh, three years has had the grade one winner at 10 furlongs, uh, uh, the winner of the Santa Anita handicap a couple years ago. And then, of course, this year, the three year old Philly Nest. So uh, she is quite a mare, and he has looked the part of a really, really good two year old. I like that he, he's come off the pace. I like the fact that he's already been two turns. I like Lost Ark the best. He could wind up the favorite in here, but we could legitimately have a nine to two favorite in the breeders futurity. So he will be my horse at Keeneland. The American Pharaoh Matt seems pretty cut and dry. Cave Rock, clearly the one to beat. Who's your top pick? Hey, Brian, who am I to uh, uh, argue against Bob Baffert in a big two-year-old race, prepping for the Breeders' Cup with the horse that is right now the best horse in his barn? I don't know, I didn't look it up, but. Who knows how many times Baffert has won this race? The answer to that is probably a lot. I'm not going to try and beat Cave Rock in here. Yeah, I just looked it up, Matt. Baffert has won the American Pharaoh uh, 67 times. So he's looking <laughs> for number 68 here 
and Cave Rock could very well be the uh, horse to do it or, or one of his other three in the American Pharaoh. Hey, listen, folks, I'm not saying Cave Rock is going to lose the American Pharaoh. You can see my top pick there is not Cave Rock, or if you're listening, I'm telling you it's not Cave Rock. I I'm just taking a shot. I think Cave Rock will be a heavy favorite, and I think he's a very likely winner. He looks like the real deal. His first two races, the debut and the Del Mar Futurity were terrific. But I think there is speed in here. Two turns for the first time. I'm going to take a little shot here. And the horse I'm going to go on is the, is not the Baffert. The, the only other horse in the field besides Baffert that I like is the horse I'm going to make my top pick, Skinner. I think Skinner has potential to be a very good horse. And I think he's a two-turn horse. So after those two sprints, and again, I saw some things to like in the Del Mar Futurity when he rallied for third behind Cave Rock, a distant third, albeit. I think he can make a bigger move with more speed going two turns. And I like Skinner's chances to run a good race in here. If I'm right, if I'm dead right, he probably only runs second to Cave Rock. But I would take that too. So my top pick in here will be Skinner. Matt, before we, uh, before we call it a show, though, I want to get your thoughts on some other two-year-old calls because we're kind of gearing up for the Breeders' Cup anyway. What do you think of the Champagne Blazing Sevens? I actually had that exact. Uh, he wasn't my top pick, but I used him a little bit. I was happy with the odds. Do you think Blazing Sevens is a horse who could uh, possibly win the Breeders' Cup this year? Uh, he certainly has to be on the list of the of top contenders. Again, you know, when when a horse sneaks up and runs a big race on a track that was as sloppy as the Aqueduct track for uh, the Champagne. You know, I mean, you, you legitimately have to say, was was it because of the slop, or or is he a horse that has quality and is getting better and will transfer it over? Um, he's worth the, uh, staying on that list of uh, BC juvenile contenders. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 I gotta like Good Magic. Uh, I think Good Magic is a potential. Really nice sire, a son of Curlin, and this, of course, is his first crop. So it was nice to see Good Magic get a grade one winner early in his career. Blazing Sevens uh, draw a line through that second race. He's got two nice wins now. Gulfport looks like a one-turn horse or, or, or more of a sprinter, even going past that. Verifying, I wouldn't give up on either. He was my top pick and ran second uh, in only his second career start. So uh, interesting horses there in the Champagne last week. Also an interesting horse coming from Iowa, Matt and Iowa bred Prairie Meadows. Although the word I get now that Tyler's Tribe, who's been absolutely the bomb out there in Altoona, Iowa, winning all his races for fun with blazing speed, and then he just keeps on going, is that he's more likely now to go to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint rather than the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But... Is Tyler's Tribe for real? Is he the fastest two-year-old in the country? I don't know, but uh, but I, I find those stories interesting and intriguing. Uh, five for five, uh, uh, open length victories in all of them, uh, a bargain basement purchase from the first crop of Sharp Azteca, and and I think we've talked about it on the show a little bit before, how the Sharp Az Aztecas have come out running, and most of them – uh, uh, were purchased for uh, uh, cheap prices because, you know, not a lot was necessarily expected from Sharp Azteca. Sure isn't going to happen again uh, 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 next year that you're going to get these bargain horses. But yeah, I, I think the connections, it's interesting, are saying that there's a little bit of breeding um, in Tyler's tribe's pedigree for the turf. So, uh, and, and, and they probably are being smart saying, hey, he's not a two-turn horse, so uh, why not take a shot um, in the turf sprint? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about the surface switch to turf. We'll see. Uh, he's going to work out at Keeneland on the turf, I know, uh, but uh, it's certainly the distance of the juvenile turf sprint probably makes more sense for this very, very fast two-year-old than the uh, eight-and-a-half furlong breeders' cup juvenile. And I'm going to sidestep that a little bit, Matt, and talk about Iowa because he was a winner, an uh, easy winner of the Iowa Cradle uh, as far as this race yet. But on that same card, Ain't Life Brand, who, uh, of course, won the Iowa Derby as an Iowa bred and then went to the Travers and faded out of the Travers, of course, a little bit. But he won uh, an Iowa bred race, uh, stakes race that day by 13-plus uh, by lengths. So another horse to 
kind of keep an eye on out there at Prairie Meadows of all places in Altoona, Iowa. All right, Matt, that's the show next week. I think we're going to come with an earlier show next week. I think we'll be around on Wednesday morning. We're going to talk a whole bunch of Breeders' Cup next week. But before we go, let me get a parting shot from you, my good friend there in New Jersey. Sure, Brian. And I, hey, I like our picks uh, this week. We got uh, four different horses. Each of us has a horse that's, you know, a little bit more of a shorter price. And each of us has a horse that's a, that is m more of a long shot. I like the combination of all that. Uh, regardless, thanks for watching the show. Thanks for leaving your comments uh, of all types on uh, on the HRN website and on the in the YouTube comment section. Um, we appreciate you watching the show. Yes, we do of all types. That's that's true. Uh, Matt and I ourselves are of are of all types whatever that means. Thanks to you for watching every week, folks. We sure do appreciate it. Breeders' Cup is gearing up. So uh, tune in to Horse Center now more than ever. Make sure you turn those notifications on after you followed us on the uh, HRN YouTube channel. Thanks to Candace Curtis, our good friend in Louisville for the race graphics. And thanks to our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Folks, we'll be back with another big show right here six days from now on Horse Center. We'll see you then.